All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to another video. Uh, Nicarus. Um, this is gonna be a short video. Uh, pretty much, it's not about uh, any builds this time. And pretty much just gonna explain. Oh, I always forget to take this off. Uh, I had a few people ask questions about what type of um, talent talents I have and what tech, uh, what blueprints I have unlocked from the tech tree, and. Uh, so I'm gonna go into that, talk about everything about my reasoning and of, you know uh, what I chose and why I chose it, and pretty much based off of how I play the game and why I think it's beneficial and stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna go into some tips on things that I think uh, would be really beneficial to you guys. One of them being uh, what I think is most important. I think it's helped me out more than anything in this game is uh, using an, an actual map. Not the one that they give you in the game, where it's like, you know, this. Uh, but people have made, uh, like, guides and stuff, like, online and everything. And I think you should really use those. Because uh, I think they help, they really help you, uh, like, find caves and see where you're at on a long distance scale. Because with this map, it only shows you where you've been. But, like, say... My mission here, like for this mission, uh, I'm doing the uh, the, Bo the Riverlands uh, expedition. Um, I've pretty much done all the missions in the other biomes, so moving on to Riverlands. Not familiar with it, um, and I'm sure all this is here. I don't have any any idea what to expect, and I guess using a map to kind of show what to expect is kind of I want to say cheating, but taking away the uh, um, what is it called? The uh, oh my god, exploring the uh, exploring experience, and I get that, um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, I like using the map, uh, the guide that people create, because it helps you find not only caves and where they're at, but what level of cave. And what I really like like to use is I'll show you here. Um, let me get to it. Okay, so the one I like to use is uh, IcarusIntel.com. Uh, one way to get to that is uh, this link. So I'm gonna, I'll put it in the description uh, for you to use, but if, if you're watching this video, feel free to pause it, you know, type it in, do whatever you need to do. Uh, but what that's going to do, it's going to bring you to a Reddit page where this person or group or whatever... Uh, created uh, this page and I think it's it's amazing so you go to this page click on it and what that's gonna do is gonna take you to here all right and obviously as you can tell it's the entire map of Icarus and like I said before you see everywhere there's caves to zoom in a little bit it shows exactly where the caves are super beneficial I think and if you notice See if I can zoom in a little closer. No? Okay. Well, in each cave, you have stripes or a ranking structure, however you want to call it. It goes from one, two, to three stripes, and then to a star. A star being uh, a cave that has the biggest amount or largest amount of uh, uh, deposits, mineral deposits, you know, iron, copper, gold, all the jazz. And, like, for example, this one. It shows a one, so it doesn't have, it's the less amount. So maybe like three or four uh, deposits or nodes, whatever you want to call them. This one has a two striper. And then let's see if you can find, I'll zoom out real quick. Let's see if you find a, a three, okay, here we go. So in the, it looks like in the Riverlands, you know, not many caves. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Um, but like for example, this area right here specifically, you got a cave with one, you got a cave with three, you got a cave with a star. So most likely this cave is going to have endless amount, not endless, but you get what I'm saying, super massive amount of deposits of everything. And if you're a big builder, you like to have a big house, you want to tech up really quickly, that's the place to go. Um, and w for example, uh, if we go back to Icarus, 
where I'm currently at is uh, move. Uh, right in between M5 and N N5 in this little area right here. On this particular on on the map. So okay, so top of M5. Alright. Let me go back to the page. Alright, so it's five top of N5, which is right here. You notice this cave is a star. That means the cave that we're in has the most uh, deposits you can get in a cave. And usually, whatever mission I'm doing, I try to f I find areas. If I want to do a big build, I find areas that have the most caves, obviously, but with the most uh, highest in rank. And this map really helps with that. It's so like, for example, if you're in the forest biome, if I wanted to do a big build, I'd probably do it somewhere around here. You know, if I can't find anywhere with a star. So, like, for example, over here, you got caves, but a lot of one, one stripes. That means there's not much in this area. So if I want to tech up really fast, obviously you need gold. Uh, you want to upgrade your tools. You know, you need platinum. You know, it's going to take you a lot longer in this area. So if I want to do that, I'd probably put my house somewhere in this area. Because look at that. All the caves here are three stars. So they're going to have a big amount of, of nodes of all types of uh, minerals or deposits. So these maps are amazing. I mean, there's a bunch out there. This is the one I use, IcarusIntel.com. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. So like when I'm doing a mission, uh, for example, what I do is I'll do a big build somewhere in the middle of the area of the walking distance I have to do. And then I'll just, uh, you know, do little quick walks to the variously big caves. I don't waste a lot of time looking for caves and then finding like one stripe caves, wasting time. Okay, might find a few iron ore nodes. Whoop de do. Go to a star, go to a three star or a three stripe. I'll find what I need. So, again, if watching the video, here's the link. Take you to this page. I'll put it in the description. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get back to Icarus. And, uh, well, looks like I'm... What the hell's going on? Oh, lovely. I got a frostbite. Ugh, it's one thing about the desert biome. When it's super cold, you get frostbite, and it's kind of annoying. Because, like, for example, if you see I have, uh, the pneumonia plus the... Looks like frostbite. That's what I'm calling it frostbite. I think that's what it is. This makes it to where you can't use your pickaxe or anything. You can't even jump. Um, so I'm going to click in my space bar. Nothing's happening. So. Got to be careful on those type of things. But I think I'll live. If I don't live, I die. Oh, well, I got my, uh, my bed set up down the cave, so I'll be good. So. What I'm going to do now. Actually, let me turn on the sound for the game so it's not... I'm not crying in misery as I'm trying to explain stuff. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so the main thing about this video. <laughs> not fooling around. Okay, so I always play solo. I don't I don't have anybody like friends I play with. So obviously <laughs> you wanna upgrade all the uh, talents in the solo if you play by yourself, which I do. Essentially, uh, doing everything in the solo except for this one, reduce damage from animals. I think I'm good enough at the game where I I can fight off anything really without getting hurt or without dying, essentially. So I don't think I need this one too much. Um, this one over here, harder to detect when sneaking. Like, and then it goes back to pretty much this. If I do get you know noticed by an animal... I think I can fend them off pretty well if I haven't already killed them before they even notice me. So, like I said, if, if you're if you're still struggling or learning uh, how to you know fight off animals and use the the all the weapons and stuff like that, this may be beneficial to you. But I guess if you've played for a while, like if you notice, I'm level 93. Got a lot of free time, guys. So 
And uh, I'll do probably n another video on leveling up quick. Um, certain things you can do that are really beneficial. Uh, but I'll do that in another video. Uh, this is essentially just showing my talents and tech tree. If you look at these, the solo, everything you need. Increase base health 100% or 100 plus to maximum need. Increase base health region. Need that. Pretty much um, speed, stamina, and health. Can't go wrong. Uh, this one here. Water consumption, food consumption, oxygen. Starting out maybe beneficial, but when you uh, play enough to where you start unlocking things in the uh, the, the ship's workshop or the store, um, you get things like uh, here it is. So I, I use these. I think these are the most important for this game. Getting the Shingong O2 tank off the bat and the Shingong uh, Canteen. These pretty much are comparable to the steel or the tank. Okay, what is it? I think it's this one, right? Uh, I probably should look at this before I start the video. <laughs> I don't waste you guys' time. Um, man, where is the tank? Ah, here it is. The oxygen tank. This thing will last you pretty much an entire... You can probably just refill it maybe twice a mission. No joke. Um, so like I said, it's, it's way over here. You need a lot of steel to get it. Once you unlock this bad boy, it's the same thing. So you start every mission with it. Good to go. And then the canteen. It lasts forever. It's comparable to uh, the... Uh, the thermos essentially it lasts forever um so that's essentially why i was good with one like you know 10 percent, i'm good with that um gives three blueprints obviously cool um you'll find these a lot in uh survival and the resources so if you're able to unlock a lot of things in the other tabs also great um, pretty much if you solo unlock all of them it's pretty easy uh, this would have been nice later on but you only have so many talents to use and uh, I think with my play I didn't really need because it's building pieces like you already constructed the building piece and with my the way I play is I do one main build and I just kind of do the legwork of running different places and then coming back to my main base, essentially. So I'm not moving a lot of building pieces, so I didn't think I needed this. Um, if you are in, like, the, the Arctic biome and stuff like that, and you're doing a long a long walk to places, you might need just, like, you know, four floors and six walls to make your little two-by-three. Wait, no. What is it? Two-by-one. But... You don't do that. I don't do that often, so I didn't think I needed this one. It's all about how, obviously, how you play. It's how you do your tree. So, long story short, a lot of talents that I use involve increasing your weight capacity and increasing your uh, the amount of stuff you get from, like, chopping trees, from mining stone, from mining minerals, stuff like that. So, again, long story short, uh, all solo except for these three is mine. A lot of increasing yields for a lot of things. For combat, like I said, I think I'm pretty good at the game. Right off the bat, I did a lot of the uh, the beta weekends. So all that practice, I think I'm good enough to where when the actual game came out, when you, obviously you create a new character, I didn't think I needed any of these. Um, I don't use any of the spears. Um, the blades, you know, with the way they made the game, they don't make a lot of difference. You get pretty much the same damage. Um, with headshots and stuff, so I don't think I need any of that. I figure with weapons, I'm mostly using rifles. They added the pistol. I don't, you haven't used that. I don't use the shotgun mostly because unless the mission makes me have to kill a giant animal type thing, like uh, if you played the uh, the uh, the betas, there was that one mission 
in the desert where you had to kill the giant worm. Might use the, the shotgun for that. Maybe to kill a mammoth. I don't know. I don't use a shotgun often because I think it kind of takes the fun out of the game because it makes it too easy at that point, at least in my opinion. So I'll stick with the rifle. So 25% craft ammo re resource reduced. Yeah, I can go with that. So in the combat, this is all I did. Um, the construction. So it's a lot of tool-based, repairing tools or reduce... Um, you know, re reduce the amount of time that it takes for the the, web, the, the tool to dis be destroyed or to break. Uh, and reduce crafting costs. I don't think it costs a lot. If you're able to, uh, like I said, use the map to find caves uh, quickly, you can find a lot of iron ores, copper ores, platinum ores, and you can, you can tech up pretty quickly to where I don't think it matters about... Uh, uh, a weapon or a tool breaking because it usually only costs one uh, one bar of whatever to repair it so you know it only cost 10 what does it cost let's go here tech tree say if I wanted to make a platinum here we go a platinum uh, pickaxe so it only costs nine platinum ingots all right so I think it costs uh, to make a, a plastic or platinum ingot, I think it costs, uh, f what is it, three or five? Three or five of the platinum ore. If you're finding a lot of caves that have a lot of platinum, yeah, you don't, you don't have to worry about that. So with this map and then having that mindset, I can get away in the talent tree without worrying about the cost to make things and the amount of time it takes to break. So. You do that with all the tools. Same idea with all of them. Um, yes, you can probably go with it costing less to craft them. But if you look, <laughs> I'm over here trying to point to my screen like you can see that. I'm dumb. <laughs> if you look, if you have to go through this pretty much this chain just to get to that. So I think you're wasting a lot of talents. And I'm at level 93, but your talent points don't continue after level 50. Now, obviously, your your blueprints do. You get three every level. So I pretty much have almost a lot of things unlocked, even up to tier four, and I still have 57 points left over. So I'll go into the, the blueprints here in, in a sec. But when it comes to construction, like I said, I only have this one. I use the pickaxe a lot because you're finding a lot of caves, and... Uh, you know, I, I think it's beneficial for crafting pickaxes if you want to get a steel or a platinum or even get up to a uh, titanium. I thought it was beneficial, um, at least in the way I play. Other things for building. I don't use, like, obviously thatch. I go right past thatch. If you look at my tech tree in tier one, I don't have any of the thatch. I, when they were making this game, I don't know if it was something they didn't think about, but you pretty much can skip right to wood. Um, I don't use thatch. If you do, you know, you do your thing, but I don't use it. So you can skip a lot of things. Again, a lot of stuff kind of like on the solo building pieces, you know, the, the weight carry. I don't really care, worry about too much that because I use one big base. I don't make a lot of small bases. Um, so a lot of these on the building side and the construction tab, stone, wood, whatever pieces, uh, I don't care about that. But again, if you're kind of like a nomad, you're moving a lot, you're not really investing a lot of time into one big build. You're just, you know, building in like a little 4x4 maybe just to get something done and then you move it on. This might be beneficial to you if that's the way you play. And uh, again, storm damage on wooden buildables. If you're teching up quick and you're upgrading quick, you can get to stone really easily. Um and it's just you know, I, I can do on how you do that. Um, again, if you're you're finding uh, uh, caves, you're getting the resources enough to build up to you know tier two, tier three. You know you're getting uh, up to kind of okay tier two. You get up to stone really quickly, right? Tier two. Uh, wow. 
is with the crafting bench, you know, you, you build up a little bit. Like this is all you really need for the masonry bench. You know, 12 iron bars, a little bit of leather, a little bit of wood and a rope gets you to masonry bench. And now boom, all of a sudden you're making stone stuff to where you don't have to worry about, um, where was it at? Damn it, where the hell did I go? Resistance. You know, you don't need these perks enough because you're getting up to higher uh, upgraded things quicker. If that makes sense. Um, so a lot of stuff you pretty much skip in a way. Like, you don't really need it. But unless, again, unless you're a nomad and you move it quick, you're probably not upgrading to a stone uh, hardly often. You're sticking with wood and you're moving a lot. Cool. Then you can probably use the wind resistance for crafted wood building. And the chance of, you know, 25% less burn chance of crafted woods. You know, you can use these if you're moved. So, like I said, I, I do one giant build. And I'm not moving a lot. So, a lot of stuff I don't need. So, if you, like I said, you know, I think I'm talking too much on that. <laughs> Alright. So, yeah. So, again, only one in the combat I use. Only one in the construction. So aside from solo, all that stuff, a lot of the stuff I uh, used was on survival. And that came to like a lot of the resources. So for example, since the way I play is I try to set up one big base and I bring a lot of stuff to the base, I'm walking a lot with a full inventory of things. So things I need when I play is a higher weight capacity for my inventory. That means the more kilograms of weight so, if I'm looking at my inv my inventory, my weight capacity is 165 kilograms. I think that's essentially the max. If you, I haven't added, you can add a backpack uh, to give 10 more percent or 10 more kilograms. There's certain uh, uh, things in the in the space uh, workshop. Well, actually, you know what? I think I might have one connected. What is this one? Okay, 5% move of speed. But you can buy these little things at the shop, and there's some auxiliary that uh, that add um, 10, 10 more kilograms. You know, things like that. So when I play... Oh, dude, let me eat real quick. I don't want to die. Two seconds. <laughs> uh, oh, shit, where am I at? I need to get back to here. So, Oh my god, I did not just drop... I think I just dropped my freaking, no, <laughs> I dropped my uh, torch. Nuts. Okay, let me see if I can do this blind. Oh, I see a little bit of light. All right. Oh, no. Oh, the pneumonia thing is a killer. All right. Oh, my God. There it goes. I kept getting attacked by animals over here, so that's why I went all the way over there. All right, food. Good to go. So I'm just going back here just to, for the hyenas and cougars don't come in and get me. Because dying is annoying. I'm sure you know. <laughs> More. Okay. All right, where was I? Okay. So a lot of my talents went to the survival. So I need like a high uh, inventory weight capacity. Because what I'm doing, like for example, say I wanted to set my build right here. It's usually nice to uh, set a big build next to a lot of resources. Because if you want to do a big build, you don't want to have to keep walking back and forth. It becomes a walking simulator game. I've, I'm sure you've heard that. Um, so... Uh, if I'm like, say I'm, I'm cra I want to get a lot of wood. There's a lot of trees around this area. So I can craft a lot of trees before I have to go back to my base. And that's the thing that, to save time, like to be able to do a big build in the short amount of time that you have. Like I think this mission was six days. You know, sometimes you have 30 days. Sometimes you have one day. Sometimes you have six hours. If you want to try to get a, a good build with a lot of time you have, it's all about time management, obviously. So... I want to be able to walk not very far 
as often, but be able to carry a lot. So a lot of my stuff is inventory weight capacity increase. So I went to this one and got one up 20%. And it goes down to this next one. I do an additional 20%. All right. So I can, no matter what it is, wood, you know, wood, stone, whatever, I can carry a lot of it. And then I kind of branched down to specifics of uh, things like this. I think is really helpful. Now, you're going to get caught a lot in, area, in, in places or situations where you don't want to, just because your inventory uh, uh, max capacity is coming up, go all the way back and come all the way back to where you're at. Um, you can go over your weight, but that's when you become encumbered. I do that a lot, but I increase my encumbrance penalty. So even if I do go over the weight, I can still uh, walk back to my base or wherever I'm at, you know, with quick, quick enough pace. Obviously, it's not as fast as no weight penalty and sprinting, but, you know, it's all about time at that point, and it's up to you, your subjective opinion on what do you think you should do. For me, I think it's beneficial for the way I play is to have a high inventory capacity weight, weight capacity, and a low uh, encumbrance penalty. Um, then for this one, increasing yields. So again, I make big builds. So I need a lot of resources, a lot of stone, a lot of wood. So I want to have higher yields. You have a higher weight capacity. You can put a lot of stuff in your in your inventory. So I want to also increase my yield so I'm not having to go back and forth and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I do that with stone. And then I just added this one so I can go into the next one. Um, you know, 5% carry, carry more stone. Cool. I did that so I can go down to this one, 10% increase in, mine, in mining iron. Uh, I mean, this is nice, the the 10% less carry weight of ores. But again, if you're not having to walk too far or as often, I don't think this would be beneficial to me. Again, if you're moving around a lot, it might be beneficial because you're walking more with stuff. A lot of these things kind of counteract itself. Um, you can either lower the weight of what you're carrying or increase the weight capacity or the encumbrance penalty or reduce it rather, you know, however you think and what's more beneficial to you. Um, so I did this one. So eventually you got to this one. Everybody wants this one. 1% chance to instantly break mineral or ore deposits while mining. Now, yes, 1% chance doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually, it actually happens a lot more than you think. Um, especially when you're going up to caves, you got to break the wall to like get your way in. A lot of the times, you know, you spend a lot of times hacking at that wall to get, to build a little entrance for you to get into the cave. A lot of times I've taken out the whole wall in one hit, you know, and all of a sudden, boom, I got like 12,000 of stone that I can take. If you watch my last video, um, for the farm one, uh, for the farm ranch house build, I explained that one of the caves I hit one percent of it took on the entire wall of the cave and it ended up being like 20,000 stone. And you can imagine 20,000 stones a lot in this game. So I think it's beneficial. It also happens with any kind of uh, ore deposits. You can run through a cave really quick. Um, okay. Uh, I didn't use this one because I don't harvest a lot of uh, stuff with hand. I tried to tech up to the what's that? The stone sickle. Oh, it's in tier one. Duh. I try to get to the stone, the bone sickle, as quick as possible because that does a lot of plants. You can you can in five swipes probably get like 500 of uh of the fiber. So doing that is a lot quicker, I think, than wasting a, a talent point on harvesting by hand. Um, so I figured I can skip that. Um, for the oxide nodes, I didn't think I needed that at all because uh, with this, this, this lasts, like I said, I only probably have to refill it twice a mission. Imagine that, twice a mission. So I'm going through, I'm hardly using nodes at all, uh, oxide nodes. So for that talent, I didn't think I needed that at all. 
what I did know, what I did need, increased wood from felling. So I need a lot of resources. So I need to increase the wood I get from a tree as much as possible. That one's an obvious one. Excuse me. <coughs> Oof. Um, this one I think is the, probably the most important talent in the game, in my opinion, that you want. Unlocks the ability to turn wood into sticks. Yeah, you can do that with the uh, the carpentry uh, bench, but it's a lot quicker because you can do this right off the bat. As soon as you land, once you have wood, you can turn it into sticks, and then boom, you know you have all the uh, all these right off the bat. Everything needs sticks, right? It's a lot quicker to chop the first tree you see down, turn it into sticks. Than having to scounge around looking at the ground trying to find random sticks so just little tips about how to use these talents you know as most as best as you can um I, if i had more talents like unfortunately you don't have as many talents to use like look at all the different things that you can choose from you know but you, you're really limited on talents i wish they'd give you more but because i'd go right to this one 30% uh, reduction in wood weight. Oh, man. That'd go a lifetime for me. This one right here, uh, I think people should be cautious. I don't know if they address this uh, in the betas, but this was one of the big issues I think a lot of people had. I, I even tried it. Um, chopped wood is automatically added to your inventory. So it pretty much means as soon as you chop a tree down, once it starts going, it's automatically the wood that you can collect is in your inventory. But what I've noticed was it reduces the amount of wood you would actually get from chopping it down, breaking it up, and then collecting each individual plank. You get a lot more doing that manually than using this talent. Because I think you get like, what, half half the amount of wood this way? So you're having to spend a lot more time chopping more trees down just to get that wood than you would not using this and collecting, you know, one by one, each plank. I don't know if they have fixed it, so I'm not wasting. Because once you activate it, you can't turn it off. So once you have it, you have it. I had to restart a whole character because of that. Yeah. So be careful on this one. The seasoned logsman. That didn't be nice to have that. You know, 1% chance to instantly chop a tree. That would save a lot of time. But you have to go through that to get this. So, no. <laughs> So, uh, okay, go over to the hunting. These are the ones I thought would be beneficial and worth my while. Uh, this one's not really about hunting, but stamina. Increasing your stamina saves you a lifetime of time. <laughs> so all these, a lot of these tie together. I don't know if you've noticed. Increase your weight capacity. Lower your encumbrance penalty. Increase the amount of yield that you get from everything. And then it, having a lot of stamina. All that together uh, really helps you get a lot of resources really quick, in my opinion. Not just for if you're doing one giant build where you're like staying stationary. Even if you're like you're being a nomad and moving a lot, I think that would literally go a long way in uh, getting your resources quicker and then specking up really quick to the higher tier in the tech trees. So, increase meat yield when skinning. Can't go wrong. Definitely use a lot of food. Um, so because of this, increase the yield in meat. I didn't think I needed anything in the cooking and farming one. Because uh, I'm not really cooking a lot. I usually don't start cooking stuff until I've reached the tech uh, tier 4 stuff. When I can use a fridge. Without a fridge or something to keep using an icebox to keep stuff cool. Great. But... Uh, to go back to this, the uh, the map guide. Oof. There's a lot more desert, forest, riverland than there is ice. So if you're not if you're cool with obviously uh, creating an ice box, making a dash for an ice biome, collect like you know 200 ice, and get back to your your uh, ice box. That's an idea, because once the ice is in the ice box, it doesn't melt as fast as it used to. They actually decrease the amount of time 
no, I'm sorry, increase the amount of time that ice can live, I guess you can say, before it melts. So that could be something you can look at if, you know, you're in that. But like I say, I'm right here right now. It, I'm not pretty much not able to go to an ice biome to use an ice box. Because a lot of times the missions, if, if you're doing a mission, uh, a lot of stuff's going to be blocked off. You know, if you tried to go out, like for example, let me go back to Icarus. I probably should look at the time. Hopefully this video is not going too long. I think I'm branching out into random things. <laughs> kind of not even talking about the purpose of the video itself, but you know, it is what it is. Um, okay, so for example, in this mission, uh, if you notice, hopefully you can see it. Uh, you might want to ha have the uh, the uh, wow. If you're watching this on YouTube. Obviously, watch on YouTube. It's stupid. If you're watching this on your phone or something, you want to probably have the detail higher to be able to see these, these little marks. But this means you can't go to this these areas as off limits or out of bounds if you've seen that before in the missions. So technically, I'm not even allowed to go into any ice biomes. So getting an ice box wouldn't work for me. So I'd have to worry about uh, tearing up to will I get the um, to eventually get the fabricator. And it costs 60 of, uh, well, let's see, that's what that costs. So I have to work up to get all that stuff, just to get the fabricator. And then if I want to use the fridge, which I do, I need all this stuff. But hey, wait, there's more. To, even for the fridge to work, I have to have a generator. And the generator is right here. So you need all this to get the generator. And then you need all this. <laughs> to have the power to go through the generator to the fridge. So you need a bunch of stuff to get to the actually using the refrigerator to get to the point where I actually want to cook and stuff. So one of the benefits about using the map again, the guide, you can find the resources a lot quicker to be able to tech up to the fabricator a lot quicker. So use the guide, bottom line, do it. <laughs> okay, back to the talents. And then uh, increase bone yield when skinning. Use a lot of bone, not just for obviously making arrows. You can use a bone to uh, create epoxy by creating crushed bone, which entails then you can make epoxy. So for crafting, not crafting, dumb. For this man pajama, using the uh, mortal and pistol. If I want to put that down, oh wow. I want to use it. So right here, I can make a lot of crushed bone. I don't need <clears throat> uh, a lot of sulfur and tree sap. I can have a lot of bone. You can make epoxy that way too. Or I'm sorry, right here. <laughs> so you need four crushed bone to make epoxy. So I need a lot of bone. Bone's really useful. If you kill a lot of animals, you get a lot of bone. I think it's an easy, uh, easy win uh, for this one. And then increase stamina region after taking damage. So I think it's beneficial mostly because for me, if you get attacked by a bear or anything big, even a cougar, I guess, once you get hit, you get that little extra uh, increase in stamina regeneration. So uh, fighting them off, you don't lose your, re lose your stamina really quick. Well, it gets gained back quicker. And so what that does is once you run out of stamina, you can't shoot an arrow, you can't swing the blade. If you can't do that, obviously you get hit, you die. So anything that helps your region or even your stamina and your region after getting hit, I think is beneficial. Um, so, yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I don't want to waste too much time. If you're still watching the video, you're sticking around, that's great. Um, I don't want videos to last too long. I've I've heard that that can be issues. Let me know in the comments if this video has gone too long for your liking. I can try to uh, for the next you know in the future um, try to make videos shorter. So let me know if I don't know it's an issue, then I won't fix it. So it helps me out. Let me help you guys out with more videos. Boom, world keeps turning. Just for example, uh, some of these I don't think you need. 
unlocks the ability to turn leather into rope. I think you'll in more areas you'll find more uh, fiber plants um, to get, and then you can make into rope with a uh, with a craft table. Um, yes, if you're if you are like goes back to goes back to your play style. If you're more nomadic, which means you're moving a lot, you don't really set up a big base. You're just setting up a little temporary spot, doing what you want to do, and then moving on. This might be beneficial to you uh, because if you're moving a lot. You're hunting a lot. You're running into a lot more animals. You're getting a lot more leather than you probably would using a craft table and collecting fibers. Again, go back to how you play. You know that probably beneficial. Um, and then again, like I said, I'll probably I'm not gonna go through. You you guys can read it if you're playing the game, and then you know read it, see if that helps you. But for me, with big base uh, style of play. You know, you want to have the biggest base possible or think it's fancy, upgrade it like you've seen in the videos. This is what I use and uh, beneficial to getting resources, a lot of resources quicker and then upgrading the different uh, tech trees quicker. Um, I'll do another video uh, sometime soon about uh, different playing techniques when you're actually uh, you're the, the strategy of how to do it, not just what you picked as a tech tree or a talent but how to actually use them. Uh, getting resources quicker, uh, getting wood quicker, uh, mining stuff quicker, different things like that. So just to kind of give you a quick idea on the tech tree itself. Again, it's not really helpful if you're kind of starting off because I've pretty much unlocked almost everything or the majority of everything in each tier. And like I said, again, I did that with 57 points left over. I don't even know if that would ever unlock everything else. One thing I'm not going to unlock is aluminum. I've heard that aluminum, it costs a lot to make for aluminum ore. For one thing, aluminum is probably, or yeah, aluminum ore, I think, is the least found, <laughs> or at least in my experience. So I'm not going to waste my time with doing aluminum stuff, structures. Concrete I can work with because... You can get steel really easily with uh, iron ore and uh, coal. So I'll unlock some of the concrete stuff. I want to do a, a concrete house build here soon. Make it look fancy and stuff. Kind of more like chic. You know, fancy looking. So look out for that sometime soon. And then for the tier 4. Okay, so this one's kind of... A lot of people have issues with tier 4 because a lot of the stuff obviously costs a lot to make. You know... A lot of stuff essentially cost, uh, needs composites. I'm sure you can see with this, 24 composites just to make this chest. But to get to composites, you know, you need the electric furnace. Then you need to make the material processor just to make composites. And look, look how much it costs to make these things. 80 concrete, 60 electronics, 30 steel. And then to get this one... <laughs> 8 titanium, 80 electronics. That's just ridiculous. I hope I hope they uh, nerf that a, a lot. Because I haven't... Even all the time I've spent making the builds, I've never teched up to that. It's just... I don't think it's worth my time. The solar panel would be nice, but look at that. You need 30 electronics and... What is it? 18 composites? Nope. And then uh, another tip. Uh, not a tip, but... I guess giving you an experience that I've had. A lot of stuff ain't worth it, in my opinion. The uh, electronic masonry bench, the electronic carpentry bench, and the chemistry bench is essentially essentially upgraded variations of of the carpentry bench in tier two, and the herbal herbalism bench, and the uh, How's the other one? The masonry bench. All to, all those all those do is just technically a you know, quote unquote quicker versions to make those things. I don't think it's worth it, especially if I need so many steel, so many con. Look at that, a hundred concrete, sixty steel, and eight. Nah, no way. 
Um, I have tried the heavy heater and the heavy air conditioner. They're nice if you have a smaller house build. Like all the builds I've done are big houses and big structures. You have to be pretty close to it for it to be even effective. Um, so the powered heating device for warming larger areas. No, it's probably like three floor spaces distance for it to be effective. So like I said, if you're, if you're doing a smaller house, sure, go for it. But if you're doing big builds, I don't think they're uh, worth it. They're cool for an aesthetic look, you know, if you're trying to make it look more homey like I usually do. But, you know, if you want to look at it, but uh, production wise, I don't think it's worth it. <clears throat> so, yeah, on the tech trees, um, you know, if I'm if I've spent a lot of time in a game, I might get to the hunting rifle just for fun, but I don't think it's worth using. Um, yeah, these are, like I said, I'll, 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 I won't take too much more time on the video, but tier four is essentially what I have. I mean, I got 57 points left over, so I'll probably unlock everything <laughs> eventually, but, uh, some things I don't bother using. I don't bother using a lot of arrows, different types of arrows. You, you can get by, you can get by with a freaking, uh, a bow. Where's that? Where are they at? A long bow and a freaking bone arrow. You can get by just fine with those. Uh, I may tear up to uh, get the. What is that bow? Ah, the recurve bow. I might gear up to that just for you know shits, but you don't need it. So. Anyways, I don't want to take too much more of your time. Uh, again, this is my talent tree. Did all solos except for these three. And uh, use that map. Again, it'll save you hours. <laughs> hours. Because again, it'll show you exactly where you are, where you need to go, what type of, what level of cave it is, you know, one stripe, two stripe, three stripes, and then a star. Definitely worth it. Props to these guys who made it. Um, you guys are amazing. If, you're, if, if some magical <laughs> miracle you're watching this, you guys are amazing. Thank you for this. Uh, but yeah, definitely use it. So anyways, uh, appreciate you guys coming by. Um, obviously, I'm on a new mission. New build going to be coming. I don't know if I'm going to be waiting to where I'm at now to build it in the desert, to do like some little desert build, or wait till I get to Riverlands. I'm not too sure yet. I might see what the Riverlands is all about before I do the build, but we'll see. Just look out for that video. So, after all that said and done, guys, hope you uh, enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Later.